Hello and welcome to Devlog Episode 1. This is a series in which I document the development, scanning and editing of my film photographs. In this episode I'll be developing a 4x5 image that I made during a night photo walk in central London. I will also be covering the use of the Stearman Press SP445 tank, scanning using the Epson V800, and my editing process using Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's begin. So here is the SP445 tank. Uh, this is the light baffle. Make sure it's in place before you load the film for obvious reasons. It goes in the second slot next to the fill drain section and should be placed as such. Then we have the sheet of film. Uh, the emulsion side is indicated by those notches. If they're in the top right then the emulsion is facing you. And the film is then slid onto the holder emulsion side out. Make sure the film is in the holder properly with your fingers so it doesn't come free during processing and then place the holder into one of the two slots in the tank. It doesn't matter which one. That's the hard part done. Uh, all you need to do now is put the lid on. Uh, there are notches on both the tank and the lid to indicate which way around it should go on there. It is worth squeezing the tank a little bit as you put the lid on as it seals it just a little bit better and, and prevents leakage. It's also worth noting that all of this was done in lights just to show you how it's done and you should actually do that with exposed film in complete darkness. So here I am preparing the dark bag for film loading. Uh, the top edge of the dark slide is black to indicate that that is the exposed film. Uh, white indicates unexposed. And then I'm just making sure that I have everything else. Uh, film holder, lid, tank and of course making sure that the baffle is in there. Uh, the tank is a little prone to leaking during development uh, so what I'll do before I start is I'll usually seal the lid a little tighter with some gaffer tape. Uh, two strips in the middle uh, will usually seal it up pretty good. Uh, but what I also like to do is to put some tape around both the fill drain uh, hole and also the vent hole uh, because liquid tends to come out uh, of the seal just underneath there. Here are the chemicals that I'll be using. Uh, I have Kodak HC110 as the developer. Uh, this is my go-to developer for Ilford HP5 Plus as it's great for pushing, pulling and developing at box speed whilst keeping fog and grain to a minimum. Then we have Ilford Ilfa Stop, which is a bog standard acid stop bath. Uh, you can of course use water, but I prefer to use an acid stop bath uh, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. And finally, Ilford Rapid Fixer. Uh, it does exactly what it says on the tin, it fixes rapidly. I'll be using Dilution H with the HC110, which is uh, one part developer to 63 parts water. And as the tank only takes 475 milliliters of solution, that means uh, around 7.5 milliliters of developer is needed here. Uh, as you can see, I'm using a syringe. Uh, that's because HC110 is like syrup. It's extremely thick and extremely potent, and it lasts a very long time, which is uh, another reason why I like it so much. I'll usually use between 25 and 30 milliliters of stop bath in the solution and between 50 and 60 milliliters of fixer uh, depending on how much water I'm using. Uh, you can of course use more fixer in the solution uh, if you want a faster fix. Uh, I'm just trying to be economical. Now that I've added the chemicals to the water I will be stirring with this uh, hand mixer that I picked up in a camera shop. Uh, it's supposed to be a specialist mixer that crushes the molecules or something like that, but you can just use a uh, box standard wooden stirrer if you want. I can't imagine it would make too much of a difference. Next I take the temperature of the developer. Uh, the temperature of the chemicals is not as important during black and white processing as it is during colour as black and white film is less temperature critical 
and shifts in temperature uh, won't affect it too much. Uh, I've developed black and white as low as 12 degrees before and had no issues, but it is worth staying within the guidelines, uh, the recommended guidelines of the film manufacturer, just to be on the safe side. This has given me a reading of 19.5, so I'll be referring to the massive dev chart for their time and temperature calculator, uh, which will indicate, uh, give or take, how long I should be developing for. So I'm about to begin developing. The film has been in a water bath for a few minutes just to bring it to temperature. A massive dev chart gave me a time of around 9 minutes and 20 seconds, but I'll be developing for 10 minutes just to give it that extra little push. Stim and Press recommends agitation once every 30 seconds after an initial uh, continuous agitation cycle for one minute. I find that their recommendation is the best. They do encourage you to find your own method for developing using the tank, but I've tried developing it the same as I would roll film, agitating once every minute, and uh, the film comes out unevenly developed, so I would not recommend doing that. As you can see, I've still used a cloth over the top of the tank while agitating, because even with the tape on the tank, uh, liquid still seems to leak out a little bit. And make sure you tap the tank after every agitation to free any air bubbles. Uh, air bubbles can cause uneven development on the film. So I'm about to pour out the developer and begin the stop bath. Different people agitate with stop bath for different amounts of time. Uh, I will usually just do it between 10 seconds and anywhere between 30 uh, seconds or a minute. Uh, it's all down to you really. The stop bath should work after about 10 seconds, but I guess you can never be too careful. So I'll be continuously agitating for uh, around 30 seconds here. And again, making sure that the tank is covered with the cloth. Uh, although I did experience uh, slightly less leaking this time around, thankfully. Sometimes it can vary, you'll get more leaking on one day and less on another. Uh, the tank was uh, a Kickstarter, so it's not mass produced by a big company, you see. Okay, and onto the fixer. Uh, I'll be fixing for 10 minutes as I used a lower dilution. Uh, you can usually fix for around 6 minutes uh, at the recommended dose, uh, but I'll be developing for 10 as. I used uh, one part fix to nine parts water. And this is the same agitation cycle as developing, so continuous for the first minute, and then once every 30 seconds for the remainder of the time. Once development is over, you want to rinse the film for about 10 minutes under running water, and then follow that with a wetting agent I'm using Ilfetol, uh, that will prevent drying marks on the film. And I need to use a small amount, I usually use about half a cap. And then, voila! We have a good negative by the looks of it. And then you just need to hang the film to dry. I'll usually wait between three and four hours drying time, unless you have some sort of drying cabinets for the film. Once drying has completed, uh, I will remove the film from the hanger. Uh, I always wear film handling gloves with larger formats to prevent fingerprints ending up on the film. Then I'll hold up the negative to the light to make sure there are no scratches or any sort of marks on it. And finally store it away into a sleeve uh, in a film binder. Now to begin scanning. The V800 comes with holders for 4x5, as well as 35mm and 120 I was just trying to get rid of any potential dust on the glass insert there. Uh, I have ordered replacement holders without the A&R glass, just to save time, because I honestly don't think the glass serves any real purpose and it attracts dust very quickly. Okay, so I'm just trying to get the film in place and secure it in the holder, just make sure it's nice and flat and that there are no seals that aren't secured. Okay, so once that's in place, 
Uh, you want to try and get rid of any dust on the scanner glass as well. And then mount the film holder in the designated slots. I'll give the holder a few additional blasts of air just to be sure that the scan is as clean as possible. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll close the lid and open Epson Scan. So this is what it looks like. Um, you want film with film holder and black and white negative film. Uh, I'll usually scan at 16-bit grayscale, even though a JPEG isn't going to come out at 16-bit. It's the highest setting. And the resolution I'll set at 2400 dpi. It does go as high as 4800, but I would not recommend doing that for 4x5 because you'll come out with gargantuan file sizes. You can, of course, also scan as TIFF uh, if you want a, a raw alternative, but I don't see the point of that for uh, web, so I'll usually just go JPEG. So when you hit preview, uh, it'll bring up the preview image. Uh, you'll want to select the normal tab rather than the thumbnail because that is just the scanner's own interpretation of what it should be scanning. And then flip it over on its side and then select the crop area yourself that way you know that you're getting the full image area okay you can also zoom in just to make sure that the cropping is good I'll usually give a little space on all sides uh, that way uh, I can custom crop in Photoshop okay so there we have it I'm just adjusting the sides here a little bit just to give it a little extra room and then once I'm happy with that, I will begin scanning. Uh, what you want to make sure as well is that none of those checkboxes are checked as uh, you don't want anything being, again, interpreted by the scanner because it could do the wrong thing. Uh, by unchecking it all, you get the maximum amount of control. So once the scanning is done, you want to open the image in Lightroom. I'll be taking you through the method I use for editing film images here. Um, it's usually very quick and basic as all I'm trying to do is get the exposure to where I want it to be. Uh, as in the best representation of the scene as I saw it on the, on the night. So I'll increase the contrast slightly, not too much. Bring down the highlights a little bit. I'll bring those back up later. Uh, shadows I'll increase. Whites, I'll do a slight increase, and then blacks, a slight decrease. Clarity, I'll bring up to between 17 and 20 on every image. And then I'll do a highlight and lights adjustment, I'll bring those back up. And then bring the darks down a little bit. And then the shadows, I'll just also either bring down slightly or increase slightly. It depends on the image really. In this case it was just decrease slightly. Dehaze I'll always set to 10. So I'm pretty happy with this image. Um, I might just alter the shadows again just slightly. Uh, yeah, so I'll just bring the shadows up uh, just a tiny tiny bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that, so I'll export. Um, I always export with the same settings. So you can select the folder you want to export to. I have my 4x5 folder. And just make sure the file name matches the image, or at least the scan name. I'll usually go by that. And then just put an edit on the end. And then the resolution will be 300 pixels per inch, JPEG, sRGB, and the highest quality. I'll get good results from that. And then hit export. So here we have Photoshop. Uh, this is where I do the cropping, healing, and sharpening of all my images. So I'll be zooming in to begin with, and then cropping off the edges, the, the film holder edges that I kept on there. This can be a bit finicky. Uh, it all depends on the holder and how much crop you applied in the scan. 
uh, in this case it's not too bad, you just have to make sure that you don't leave any bits of the film holder hanging over because then you're going to have to just either recrop it or somehow get rid of it using one of the brushes. See here in the, in the corner there is a slight bit of holder left in there but I'll get rid of that quite easily. Okay so next I'll be selecting the spot healing brush tool. This is what I use for dust removal. Uh, I'll usually set between 20 and... well again it depends on the, the image size but usually between 20 and 25 points initially and then I'll make it smaller for the, the, the harder to get to uh, spots. Okay, so once spot removal is done, there's just one left over there, which I'll get rid of now. I will bring the photo back out to normal size. I don't think there are any more spots here. There might be the, the tiniest spots of, like on there, but it, I wouldn't say it matters unless they're obvious. So I'll use Unsharp Mask just to do a bit of sharpening. Uh, generally I'll have it set to 150 on the amount, radius 1.4 and threshold 2, but that's for 35mm and then just bring down the amount to around 100 for 4x5 or medium format. And there you go. I'll save that now. I'm happy with it. Yep, I'm happy with that. Not the greatest photo in the world, but I like it. Um, I did make a mistake taking the camera on a photo walk. Uh, large format is definitely a solo workflow due to the uh, slowness of every shot. Uh, being in a group is a little awkward because of that waiting. And there was a little bit of waiting for this one. It was a four minute exposure at f32. Uh, the majority of that time was down to the reciprocity failure calculation. And as you can see, a car entered the shot in the last 10 seconds, which has become a pair of trailing lights in the road there. Uh, so yeah, this has been uh, Devlog Episode 1. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat informative. Uh, any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'm sure there's something I missed. And you can also visit my website, thomasamore.com, for more of my work. And if you're feeling particularly generous, uh, you can also purchase prints from me there. That's all for now, thanks for watching and keep an eye out for more in the coming weeks. <laughs>